<laughs> so this is John Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln uh, Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Belinda Ritter Harris, um, Arkansas. Harris -Ritter. I'm sorry. Oh, Harris. I'm sorry. I got it backwards. That's okay. No, I was going to screw up your name somehow. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, she is uh, on the Arkansas uh, Commission. Uh, commission. Ah, now I'm getting it all screwed up. Arkansas State Elections Commission, uh, and she's one of the commissioners um, on that board, along with the Secretary of State. So um, uh, she certainly knows what's going on elections in her state. And that's why I'm asking her today about, from the voters' perspective, if somebody, this is just one situation, but uh, if somebody arrived at your door and asked for your ballot, uh, meaning that you had received an absentee ballot in the mail, um, you know, what, would, what should you do? Should you challenge them? Should you call the police? What do you think they should do, Belinda? Well, if someone comes to your door and says, hi, I'm a good Samaritan and I'm here to turn in your absentee ballot for you. You should say, thank you very much, but I will turn it in myself right. and shut the door. Um, in Arkansas, you have to have your absentee ballot returned the same way you indicated you were going to return it when you requested it. And there are only three ways. You take it and turn it in yourself, you mail it, or you give it to a designated bearer. And you have to have the name of the specific person who's going to bring it back. So if someone who is not that person takes your ballot back, um, when they sign in that they're bringing it back, that's not going to match what you gave the um, election officials. And so your ballot has a good chance of not counting. And you don't want that to happen. You want to be sure that it gets returned the same way you said you were going to return it. Would they actually check the person's ID that's uh, dropping it off to make sure that the name matches? Yes. Right, and they that's statewide. They have to statewide. show their ID, and then they have to sign in, and that is statewide. Wow, that's that's a pretty strong. Um, what do they call it? Uh, chain of custody, and uh, and I've seen it. It is a chain of custody. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, there, there's good reason for it. We've had trouble in the state in the past with absentee ballots, and so they kind of tighten things up to make sure to do their best to make sure that doesn't happen and that every person who casts a vote legally gets that vote counted. So what, it, I'm extrapolating a little bit here, but what if the, the person at the door um, or uh, the, the voter answering the door feels threatened, like uh, they don't have a choice handing over the ballot and they, they find themselves in a situation of handing over the ballot um, against their will by whatever means, you know, some sort of intimidation. So what would be their recourse at that point? Do you, um, give what would they give do? them the ballot if, you, if you're in fear for your safety and then shut the door and lock it and call the police and tell them exactly what happened. Okay, and that would be the correct course of action, right? Right. Because of the, the, because of the intimidation. What, what if it wasn't actual physical, but they just implied, you know, something that um, pro possibly wasn't prosecutable. What if they like implied uh, something that's uh, like, uh, um, you know, some tor sort of social media intimidation, something that likely the police wouldn't be able to do anything about, but would still be intimidating enough to perhaps for many people to hand over their ballot. What would they do then? Uh, I would still call the police. In this state, okay. it, can be, it can be a felony for intimidating someone to give you the, your ballot. So okay, any form of would, intimidation. Uh, right, I would call the police, make a report, and let um, law enforcement decide whether it was to that level or not. Okay, excellent. All right, well, thank you very much. That's very informative because um, I don't think I've heard a lot of people talking about that being in that actual situation, what the voters should do. Um, so thank you for that. Well, You're welcome. Uh, thank you for your time. This has been Lincoln Shorts.